This story unfolds in Yungi Village, a charming small town located away from the bustling city. The people living here are known for their warm hearts and friendly nature. We meet Yugun, our protagonist. She's a young woman who runs a place called the Green Studio. She took over the studio when her mother passed away, who had been managing it for a decade. After the sad incident, her father decided to quit his job and find solace on Jeju Island while helping his brother. Currently, Gun is working at her studio as she overhears a conversation outside. Some folks are discussing an empty house nearby. She peeks out the window and sees a real estate agent talking to a young boy who appears to be interested in buying the house. Gun thinks the boy seems relatively young to be buying property, and she even wonders if he's up to 20 years old. But then, she remembers that the house has been vacant ever since its elderly owner passed away. While pondering the situation, there's a knock at her door, and the real estate agent enters, asking about her studio's progress. While chatting with the agent, the young boy catches her eye. He approaches and inquires how long she's been living in the neighborhood. Gun explains that she's been here for over a decade, which she considers a long time. Intrigued, the boy moves closer and asks for her opinion about the house. Gun still thinks he's too young to be buying a house so she curiously asks if he's looking for a place for himself and his parents. He reveals that he's searching on behalf of his uncle, who can be quite particular, making the house hunt a bit challenging. He then asks if the neighborhood is peaceful. Gun replies that it can get a bit lively at times but generally quiet. After this conversation, she returns to her work. In the same house, there's Yusio Un, Gun's younger twin sister, getting ready to head out. She's about to meet a publisher, and she has no interest in the studio business. Sian's dream is to become a travel writer, so her sister has been managing the studio all by herself. Gun comments on her sister's outfit, expressing concern that it might be too revealing. However, Sion disagrees and thinks she looks great. She even playfully suggests that Gun might be worried about her outfit being too risque. Sion tells her to stop nagging, reminding her that being born just five minutes earlier doesn't grant her nagging rights. Gun advises her to take another look in the mirror, but Sion remains confident that she'll still look fabulous. She also mentions that she'll be out late and asks Gun not to wait up for her. As Seo Eun leaves the house, her scarf accidentally slips off and falls at the feet of the young boy who is still inquiring about the house. He picks up the scarf and hands it to her. She thanks him and playfully calls him Mr. Handsome. The real estate agent informs her that he's here to check out the house across the street. Seo Eun remarks that they'll see each other often if he moves in, and then she remembers she's running late for her meeting, waves goodbye, and heads out. The young boy then asks the realtor if Seo Eun also lives here, and the agent confirms that she does and that she's the twin sister of the woman he met earlier. Learning this, the young boy decides to take another look at the house, even though it's a bit old but still sturdy. He recalls his uncle's preferences for a house, privacy and a yard big enough for a pool, which is quite the opposite of what this house offers. He plans to talk to his uncle to see if he can convince him about this house. This young boy, now identified as Cho Hyseok, calls his uncle, whose name is Kong, to share his find, describing it as quiet, spacious, and clean, and claims it's the best option he's seen so far. His still sleepy uncle says he'll consider it and discuss it later. Hyseok persists, emphasizing that someone else is interested in buying the house, so they need to decide quickly. He urges his uncle to trust him and send the contract fee, to which his uncle agrees. After ending the call, Hyseok silently prays, and the agent notices and questions his actions. Hyseok explains that he could end up in trouble soon. While he continues to pray, the agent informs him that the contract fee has just been received. Seeing the sender's name, Kong Sivan, the realtor assumes he must be a hasty person with such an impressive name. Meanwhile, our hasty fellow with the splendid name, Kong Sivan, is peacefully asleep, completely unaware of the unfolding events. The following day, in the quiet town of Yungi Village, Gun finds herself completely exhausted, but she feels the need to tackle some work while she still has the time. As she tiredly sits inside her home, she hears the voices of people arguing outside. Their heated discussion centers around a piece of furniture that nearly met its end. Curious, she peeks out of her window, wondering whether it's the student or his uncle who has finally taken ownership of the property next door. As she observes the scene, Gun's mind races with thoughts about who the new neighbor might be. She fondly remembers the kind old lady who used to live there and hopes that the new resident will be just as pleasant. A few days later, a car arrives in the quiet neighborhood of Yungi Village, and it turns out to be Hyseok's uncle, who appears to be dissatisfied with the house. Regret fills him as he questions his decision to trust his nephew in this matter. He decides to call his nephew and summon him to the house for a meeting, but Hyseok, aware of his own actions, avoids the idea altogether. 
During their phone conversation, the uncle bitterly complains about the house and even goes as far as calling his nephew a dead man for suggesting such a place. In an attempt to persuade his uncle, Hysiok mentions the prospect of having an attractive neighbor, hoping it might soothe his uncle's frustrations. After the call ends, the uncle steps out of the house and can't believe he's supposed to call this place his new home, especially since he's already paid for it in full. Discouraged by the condition of the house, he decides to contact an interior contractor, who is set to meet him in just 30 minutes. The uncle expresses his willingness to wait all night, if necessary to have the house completely renovated, from top to bottom, including the addition of a garden and a pool. While contemplating the situation outside, he notices the neighboring house and recalls Hysiok's description of the hot lady next door. Hoping to lift his spirits, he looks at the lady he sees through the window, but she doesn't quite match the enticing image his nephew painted for him. Disappointed, he hoped she wasn't the one Hysiok was talking about. Soon, the interior contractor arrives, and the uncle shares his ambitious plans for a thorough renovation of the house, including all the features he desires. He emphasizes his desire for the project to be completed by the end of the week. Startled by the tight deadline, the contractor expresses concern, noting that there are only five days left in the week, excluding the current day. However, the uncle insists that they work day and night to achieve this goal. In an effort to motivate the contractor, he offers to pay double the originally quoted price if the renovations are finished within the five-day time frame. The contractor, motivated by the promise of extra compensation, eagerly agrees and promises to give their best effort to meet the deadline. Gun notices that people are wearing lighter clothes, a sign that summer is approaching, and she's also looking forward to the summer this year. Her sister, Yusioun, comes out and announces she's going out. Gun questions her choice of attire, and Yusioun asks if she always has to fight for her right to wear what she wants at her age. Gun then asks her sister where she's been going lately, and she replies that she's trying to get her driver's license. Gun is surprised and asks why she decided to do it now when she had refused to do it earlier when Gun had suggested it. Yusioun explains that she changed her mind because it's challenging to rely on public transportation. Gun thinks to herself that there are many things she wants to nag about, but she decides to let it go, not knowing how her twin will react. Plus, their mom's death anniversary is coming up soon. Gun then asks her sister if she'll come home early because she has a backlog of orders and needs her help. Yusioun suggests that her sister consider closing her studio and getting a different job. She thinks the studio keeps Gun indoors all day and advises her to go out and maybe try dating. Yusioun reassures her twin that one failed relationship doesn't mean she has to be alone forever and promises to come home early if possible. Now alone, Gun reflects that she can't imagine meeting someone new, and dating isn't easy for her. She admits her sister has a point but says she likes her current life because it shields her from getting hurt again. Suddenly, she hears a noise outside and decides to investigate. Then, she finds people demolishing a wall. Worried, she asks why they are tearing down a perfectly good wall and one of the workers tells her they're doing it for good money and suggests she ask the owner if she wants to know more. Gun feels sad because she used to be close to the old woman who lived in that house before she passed away. The construction continues for days, and the house becomes unrecognizable. Later, Yusioun tells Gun that the place has been completely transformed, with a yard, trees, and even a pool. She mentions that houses in Korea typically don't have backyard pools. Yusioun asks her sister if she has seen their new neighbor, speculating that all the security cameras around the house suggest he might be a criminal in hiding. Gun urges her not to jump to conclusions and explains that many homes have security cameras due to safety concerns. However, Gun still feels uneasy, wondering about the new neighbor. In another scene, Kong arrives to inspect the house and is impressed by the wall he sees. He decides to go inside the house and unexpectedly encounters Gun, recognizing her as the woman he saw earlier. He starts to think she might be the person Hysiok mentioned. After a moment of silence and staring, she finally greets him because they'll be neighbors. He responds coldly, saying he doesn't intend to get to know anyone in the area, and asks if she has anything more to say. Gun frowns and walks away, leaving Kong to wonder if he was too harsh. He goes inside to check the house's interior and expresses satisfaction, giving credit to his nephew for finding this place. Much later, after settling in, Kong steps out of the shower and hears his phone ringing. He answers the call, and the person on the other end asks when he's planning to have a housewarming party in his new home. Kong declines, saying he doesn't want to invite people over. The caller persists and reminds him that someone named Jungi asked about him, but Kong remembers that she had caused rumors about him in the past, so he decides to make up an excuse. He tells the caller to inform Jungi that he's either passed away or that he's gotten married and then abruptly ends the call. After hanging up, Kong privately reflects on his decision to return to Korea uncertain if it was a good idea. He never thought he'd come back when he left a few years ago. 
He thinks about how his nephew, Hysiok, was right about one thing, the place is very quiet. Just as he starts to doze off, he hears someone shouting from outside. Curious, he goes to investigate and discovers that his neighbor is singing while doing laundry. Meanwhile, Gun is puzzled by her sister's loud singing while hanging laundry, so she yells at her to stop. Seoun doesn't pay much attention, so Gun decides to set the table and asks her sister to come down. Seoun questions why her twin's cooking is more similar to their mom's, implying that it tastes better when her sister does it. Gun becomes nervous, and Seoun asks if she has something to say because of her behavior. Gun then suggests that Seoun could work in her studio and help out more often, but Seoun responds with a glare, saying she doesn't want to work there and lacks the patience for long hours. She reveals her plan to go to India in the fall for work with someone unfamiliar to her sister and firmly states that she won't work in the studio. Gun then asks about her sister's driver's license, and Seoun casually mentions failing the test and crashing while parking, causing Gun to drop a dish in shock. She expresses concern about her sister's well-being, but Seoun insists she's fine and that the driving school discouraged her from driving. Later that evening, Gun, who had a busy day and missed dinner, decides to have a beer. She goes outside to clean the windows and sees Kong standing there. As she's about to greet him, she remembers his earlier request not to say hello. Kong approaches her and asks if she doesn't think it's rude to sing early in the morning, thinking she was the one who sang earlier, but she apologizes and promises it won't happen again. Kong suggests they both avoid doing things they'll regret next time and leave, leaving Gun wondering why her neighbor had to be someone like him. The next morning, Gun shares her neighbor's comment with her sister, who questions his age. Gun believes he's young and around their age group. Seoun asks what kind of guy he is, and her sister's response leaves her curious. Gun suggests it's best not to run into him, and Seoun concludes that he must be unpleasant, recalling that her sister had once called him a weirdo. Gun agrees, thinking that their new neighbor is quite unusual. In another scene, Kong is currently at his workplace, and he's making sure everyone is on their toes, keeping them alert and active. Some of the other people around are quietly chatting and commenting on how rushed he seems this morning. However, he realizes this could pose a problem because all the models he's working with today are inexperienced newcomers. He even questions the photographer, asking if these are the only models available. He suspects that the models who heard about his reputation might have refused to work with him, leaving him with no choice but to collaborate with the ones he has. Kong keeps expressing his dissatisfaction, particularly with one model's pose and smile, which eventually brings her to tears. Once the photo shoot is over, a woman named Cha Yonhee enters the scene and praises Kong for his work style. She happens to be the director of the new clothing brand Eliza, although Kong is puzzled as to how she found out he's back in Korea. She suggests they grab a meal since he's finished with his shoot and even offers to cook for him if he'd rather stay in. Kong thinks she's being overly clingy, especially when she requests to stay with him while he works, despite his insistence that his office is a no-entry zone because it's his personal space. Cha Yonhee gives him her business card and suggests he call her if he changes his mind about dinner or drinks. With that, she leaves. Kong is relieved that she's gone so he can resume working. As he settles in, he looks at a photo of the model who cried earlier and contemplates naming it, Regret. He plans to include it in his upcoming exhibition, though he's uncertain if the model will agree to it. After a while, he realizes he hasn't eaten much besides a loaf of bread, so he heads downstairs in search of food. To his surprise, he discovers that he forgot to stock the fridge, leaving him with no options at home, so he decides to go out for a meal. Frustrated and unsure if there are any nearby stores, he calls Hysiok. Hysiok immediately starts apologizing for any past wrongdoings, making Kong wonder who his nephew takes after. Feeling the loneliness and missing his nephew, Kong decides to lift the ban on Hysiok and allows him to visit whenever he wants. His nephew inquires if he can come over tonight, and Kong agrees but asks him not to arrive empty-handed. Kong decides to venture out to find a supermarket for groceries, and after some time, he locates one, surprised by its size in the neighborhood. While shopping in the supermarket, he comes across his neighbor again and recalls their previous encounter. He decides that if they cross paths, he will pretend not to recognize her. As he goes through his shopping list, he realizes he has everything except meat. While he heads to the meat section, he encounters Gun again. Gun stops before saying hello to him and frowns, looking back at what she is doing before seeing him. This makes him angry, and he wonders if she's really going to treat him like he's invisible. So, he continues to buy his meat and heads to his car to put everything he gets in the trunk. As he drives by, he sees his neighbor again walking down the road and wonders if she walked all the way there. He contemplates giving her a ride since they are going the same way but drives away since they both agree to treat each other like they are invisible. Meanwhile, Hysiok is on his way to meet his uncle. He sees Seoun walking and stops his bike to greet her, 
and then he asks if she's on her way home. So he offers her a ride since he's on his way to his uncle's. She's hesitant because she's wearing a mini skirt and cannot sit on a bike with that. So he removes his jacket and hands it to her to aid her mini skirt. She asks him if he's a lot friendlier than his uncle, but Hysiok flinches and asks her if she has met his uncle. She says she has only heard about him, but he sounds like a handful. He then says his uncle can be a bit crass, but he hopes she can forgive him with her beautiful heart. So, she asks him for his name, and when he tells her, she says it's a nice name, hoping that his uncle is half as lovely as his nephew. Hysiok advises her not to get her hopes up, and she says even her sister can't stand his uncle, so that says a lot. As they are on their way now, he blushes and tells her that he wants her to know he's thrilled she's his neighbor and it's an honor to him. She responds by saying she's also glad and that they will be great neighbors. She then begs him to drop her a little before her place because of her sister, who will not let her hear the end of it if she sees her like that. Hysiok is at his uncle's place now. Kong notices his mood and has to ask if he's okay and if something happened. Hysiok gulps his drink and says nothing happened, but he feels something good might happen soon. His uncle then asks him what will happen, but he replies by saying he'll tell him later when it happens. He then asks his uncle if the lady he told him about from the studio isn't really sexy. He also adds that he doesn't think he has seen anyone like her before. Shocked, Kong asks him if he's drunk and if he knows what sexy means. This causes Hysiok to panic and defend himself by saying he's not a kid anymore, and he sure does know what it means to be sexy. Giving him a thwack on his head, Kong says that he knows the only women he knows are his mom and the woman across the street, so he shouldn't toss the word sexy around like that. However, Hysiok insists that Siowoon is a complete knockout. At this point, they don't realize that they are referring to two totally different people. Moreover, Kong thinks that Hysiok needs a lesson on aesthetics. The next morning at the studio, Gun has to disinfect thoroughly because she's having a one-day class today. She thinks about the chores she has set out for the day and starts wiping. She even considers closing the shop for a few days to go and see her dad. But she suddenly hears some noise outside, so she goes to see and finds out that it's another group of girls heading to her neighbor's house. This causes her to wonder what they are up to. She then overhears Kong telling one of the girls not to make things hard for everyone and to be on her best behavior. This makes her wonder what kind of work he does and what he means by best behavior. While she's still peeking by the window, the door creaks open, and a lady walks in, commending the smell she is perceiving. The lady then asks Gun what she's doing by the window. Startled, Gun welcomes her in while the lady comments that it's so nice out that she had to stop by on her way home. Gun rushes out of the window and offers to serve her some cookies and coffee. She appreciates the cookies given to her and says she's always amazed by her treats. Then the lady asks her if she doesn't think something is going on in the house across the street. She adds that she heard the guy lives by himself, but he regularly has flocks of women over at his home. Furthermore, she says he also put up a tall wall so no one can look inside. Because of this, she assumes he could be doing strange things there. To further emphasize her point, she explains that politicians and men in high places like to meet in private residences to spend time with women in secret, and this case could be something like that. Gun is startled when she hears what her friend says, and her reaction shows that she's not quite sure what's happening. She responds uncertainly, but her friend insists that what she heard is true. She also claims she saw Gun's neighbor yesterday and describes him as someone unusual. Despite this, Gun still believes there must be a reasonable explanation for her neighbor's peculiar lifestyle. The lady, however, is adamant that the world can be unexpectedly strange, even betting on her belief that the neighbor is up to something. Eventually, they bid each other goodbye, and the lady leaves the studio, passing by other people entering for a class. As they both begin their baking classes, Gun's attention drifts momentarily, and she starts thinking about her neighbor's unsettling behavior. However, her focus is brought back when one of her students needs assistance with a cake. Gun decides that whatever her neighbor does in his home should not concern her, so she tries to put those thoughts aside. Meanwhile, Kong finishes his day's photo shoot. He reflects on the incident with his new model, Do He, which led to them ending the shoot prematurely. Kong realizes he needs to clear his mind and regain composure, finding it hard to believe that the model left because of something he said. His plan is to take a shower, have a meal, and then think about the situation further. Back at Gun's house, she's just finished her classes and realizes she missed her lunch once again. As she contemplates the progress made during the class, a dog barks at her door, and she notices that it's sniffing a wallet on the floor. Gun assumes it might belong to one of the ladies who visited her neighbor earlier, so she heads to her neighbor's house, repeatedly ringing the doorbell. However, there's no response, leading her to wonder if he's intentionally not answering. The door unexpectedly opens, and the dog rushes inside. She feels anxious about entering her neighbor's place but has no other choice as the dog continues to roam around. 
Inside, she's shocked to find that the place looks entirely different, with all the trees gone. Meanwhile, Kong, who has just finished showering and is feeling better, notices some movement and realizes it's his neighbor. Angrily, he questions her audacity for entering his house without permission and wonders how she managed to open the door. Sneaking, he approaches her from behind and demands to know who gave her permission to enter. Startled, she tries to turn, twisting her ankle in the process. Before she can utter a word, he covers her mouth with his hand, warning her not to scream. Anxiously, he expresses that he should be the one screaming, not her. Out of fear, she bites his hand, causing him to snatch it back in pain and accidentally fall into a pool. Gun approaches him and asks if he's okay. Instead of answering, he comes out of the pool and inquires why she bit him earlier. She, in turn, questions why he had to touch her. He's confused by her question and asks if she would rather he had let her fall. However, she insists that he could have prevented her fall without touching her inappropriately. Their argument continues, with him asserting that he only grabbed her to prevent her from falling, but she feels like he crossed a line. He even regrets helping her, citing the saying that, no good deed goes unpunished. Curious about why he's outside with his shirt on, Gun's thoughts wander, and she recalls something a lady mentioned about him in her studio. He then expresses a desire to know why she trespassed on his property, and she explains that someone dropped a wallet in front of his house. He's surprised she came all this way to return it. She starts by apologizing for coming uninvited and explains her reasons, including his failure to answer the door and a dog running into his place. She admits her mistake but emphasizes that she was trying to help and urges him to say thank you. He agrees to thank her but points out the bite she gave him, suggesting she owes him an apology. Gun apologizes for the bite, stating that it was unintentional. She offers to pay for any medical treatment he might need. He takes the wallet from her and, if that's all she has to say, he tells her she can leave. Since she came on her own, he's sure she can find her way out. As she walks away, she pauses to thank him for preventing her fall and then hurries off. He returns to his house, tossing the wallet on a chair, and laments how the entire day has gone wrong since the photo shoot. A few days later, at her studio, some people request an order they will pick up next week. Gun reflects on how challenging it is to manage her mother's business alone, even with just a few more customers. She considers scaling down the business, but she also has customers who come from afar. Her only option seems to be hiring someone to assist her. Meanwhile, in another scene, Kong searches for something to eat since he only has water and alcohol. He recalls his nephew mentioning a good restaurant in the neighborhood and calls him for directions. He heads to the restaurant, unsure if he'll like it since it serves healthy food. The door creaks as he goes in search of the restaurant, and to his surprise, he sees Gun again. He's becoming increasingly bothered by how often he encounters her, considering he only moved here ten days ago. Kong is staring at Gun, confused. He's thinking about how Gun acts differently in the studio, where she's friendly, and when she's with him, where she's fierce. But when she's around Hyseok, she becomes sexy, which surprises him. He's still not sure if it's real or not and he's trying to figure out why Gun can have so many different personalities. He remembers the time when Gun bit his hand and asked about it politely. He doesn't really understand her, but he's really hungry, so he decides to forget about it and go get some food. As he approaches the restaurant, he has a bad feeling, but he thinks it's just food, so what could go wrong? Inside the restaurant, he orders a meal that sounds fresh and healthy, but he's not sure if all the dishes taste as bad as this one. So, he decides to try two other dishes. After 30 minutes, he leaves the restaurant, saying he'd rather eat what he likes and die early than eat such bad meals and live longer. He decides to get a drink to wash down the taste in his mouth, so he goes to a convenience store. In the store, he sees a seven-dish meal and decides to buy it since his previous meal was tasteless. After trying it, he confirms that it tastes better than the food from the restaurant. Later that night, he goes back home with extra food to eat as a midnight snack. He sees Gun and thinks about taking pictures of her, which reminds him of his mom. He gets anxious, thinking that Gun might have noticed him staring at her. He starts planning what to say if she asks him about it, but she closes her window without saying anything. As he enters his house, he suddenly feels like he's running away, which is strange. On the other hand, Gun is in her house, wondering why Kong was staring at her the previous night. Ever since the wallet incident, she can't stop thinking about it and trying to understand what kind of person he is. She decides to start her day by checking the internet, and she finds out that her ex-boyfriend, who broke her heart and left her to marry someone else, is getting a divorce. This news brings back memories of last summer when he broke up with her. She blames and curses herself for being so devoted to him. Seo Eun hears some surprising news about her sister's former boyfriend getting a divorce. She's actually happy about it because she didn't think his marriage was very loving, and she believes it's karma because he got married for the wrong reasons.
She's relieved her sister broke up with him that summer, and she hopes her sister doesn't still have feelings for him, especially after hearing this news. She even jokes that if he ever visits her sister again, she should give him a good kick, suggesting he doesn't deserve to keep his manhood after everything. Seowon mentions that they should have a drink to celebrate the news today, but she has another important commitment. However, her sister is fine with having a beer on her own and calling it a night. After hearing more about the divorce, Gun starts feeling a bit bad for her ex-boyfriend because it seems like he's being overshadowed by his wife, even in the news. She briefly considers calling a friend to come over because she's feeling lonely but then remembers her friend is on a trip with her husband. Feeling bitter and lonely, she curls up and looks at a doll her mom made for her when she was a child. Thankfully, she finds comfort in the doll, keeping her warm. She starts questioning whether she'll ever find love again. Given her current feelings, she thinks she might need more than one beer. Deciding to head to the convenience store, an idea crosses her mind to date the first guy she meets outside. She takes her umbrella and leaves for the store, wondering where she got that idea from in the first place. As she's about to enter the store, she unexpectedly runs into her neighbor, Kong. He thinks it's the third time he's seen her today and contemplates whether to say hello. On the other hand, Gun wonders why she has to bump into him on a day like this. Kong thinks she seems ruder than usual because she sighed in front of him. Then he jokingly mentions the last time she grabbed his hand, asking if it will be his foot this time. Annoyed, she responds that he can do the same to her if he wants. Kong is surprised by her response but notices that she has pretty feet. Feeling a bit uneasy, Gun finally speaks up and asks him to stop staring and suggests they head inside the store. Once they're indoors, the salesperson, noticing her distress, inquires if something's wrong. Gun proceeds to confide in him about her fear of Kong, her neighbor. The guy empathizes, mentioning that Kang's been frequenting the store a lot lately, and even he gets a bit jittery around him. It turns out Kong has a peculiar fixation on lunchboxes. If anyone dares to pick one up, he shoots them an intimidating glare as if he's ready to pounce. Last time, a customer put a lunchbox back just because of Kang's presence. Gun can't help but wonder why her neighbor bothers her so much. Outside, the rain starts pouring heavily, trapping her at the store, unable to go home. She asks the salesperson if she can sit and enjoy her drink since there are no other customers, and he agrees, mentioning he was starting to feel a bit lonely. As she settles with her drink, her thoughts once again drift to her enigmatic neighbor. She ponders why he always wears that perpetual frown when he looks at her and whether he's aware of the neighborhood's gossip about him. She's baffled that she was once even attracted to someone like him and now feels repulsed, claiming she'd rather be lonely. In another scene, a woman drops off her child at Gun's studio, pleading to be back within an hour. Meanwhile, Kong Sivan prepares himself, dressing up in a suit despite the sweltering weather, unwilling to appear shabby for his mentor's exhibition. He mentions wanting to take his new car for a spin before heading there. However, he receives a call about a shoot next week, but Kong declines the offer to reschedule, hinting at a more urgent meeting. Kong eventually notices Gun with a cheerful little girl at the studio, a stark contrast from the sadness he observed in her last night. He finds himself strangely interested in her, despite his usual aversion to worrying about others, stemming from past betrayals. Then, he drives off. Upon reaching the exhibition, Kong is taken aback when his mentor is too ill to attend his final exhibition as a photographer. While admiring the artwork, he contemplates whether he'll ever be able to produce such masterpieces. Suddenly, he hears a voice he'd rather avoid, and a person he despises approaches, teasing him about his newfound fame abroad and lack of humility. Kong Sivan sees this individual as an idiot who achieved academic awards through bribery during university. They engage in a heated conversation, with the person inviting Kong for a drink, but Kong angrily refuses, adamant that he'd rather die of boredom than share a drink with someone like him, urging him to leave and not spoil the atmosphere. The exhibition concludes and Kong contemplates stopping by the convenience store to grab some lunchboxes on his way home. Upon arrival, the inquisitive salesperson asks about his job, but Kong dismissively tells him to mind his own business. Kong wonders if everyone in the neighborhood is so nosy, always peering into his house as they pass by. He worries they might think he's a weirdo. While driving, he spots Si Oun, whom he recognizes from the studio. A few days later, at the studio, a man applies for the job Gun posted. Although Gun had hoped for a female candidate closer to her age, she couldn't turn him down due to his enthusiasm and qualifications. She suggests a one-month trial period before discussing his salary, and he eagerly accepts, starting the job immediately. Siowoon informs her sister that the new employee was surprised to learn they are twins. She also asks to borrow her sister's car, but Gun requests to see her driver's license first, expressing concern about her sister's lack of driving lessons. 
Seoin hands over the license reluctantly, and Gun advises her to take lessons and update the car's insurance. Seoin dismisses her sister's warnings, thinking she's making excuses. Gun offers her new employee something to eat as a treat for his hard work on the first day. He suggests dropping the formalities since she's older than him, and she can call him Hyunho. He shares that his older sister is Gun's age and has recently had a baby. So Gun agrees to be less formal. He expresses his worry about not getting the job and his dream of opening a studio like hers. Gun spots her neighbor again, still surprised that he lives in such a big house, and eats convenience store food. Later that night, Seoun, without an umbrella, wonders why it suddenly starts raining. Since she has no other choice and it's getting late, she decides to walk home in the rain. Currently, Seoun returns home, completely soaked from the rain. Her immediate objective is to locate a cozy blanket to wrap herself in. As she searches through her belongings, she stumbles upon her sister's car key, which triggers several thoughts about taking the car for a spin. She decides to give it a shot since she can still recall all the road signs and rules. With confidence, she embarks on a brief drive. A few minutes later, she's still behind the wheel, feeling like a natural-born driver. She boldly announces her intention to park the car with precision, but just as she's about to do so, a sudden mistake results in a collision. The following day, Sian's sister comes to wake her up for breakfast but is surprised to find her absent from her room. She attempts to contact her through phone calls, but there's no response. Eventually, Gun discovers a note left behind by her sister, confessing to a hit and run but reassuring that no one was harmed, urging her not to worry. Early in the morning, Kong decides to visit a nearby convenience store to grab a meal. Upon exiting his home, he notices an unfamiliar car parked in front of his house. Upon closer inspection, he identifies a scratch on his car, sparking his anger. He declares his intent to go through all available dash cam and security footage to identify the culprit behind this damage. After a brief investigation, he discovers that the person responsible for the hit and run is none other than his neighbor across the street. This revelation leaves him confused, as he had previously viewed her as a seemingly ordinary individual. He begins to speculate about her actions, including the possibility of her driving under the influence. Driven by anger, he resolves to teach her a lesson. Meanwhile, at the studio, Gun is busy making calls in an attempt to trace her sister's whereabouts. After concluding her phone call, she ponders the confusing circumstances surrounding her sister's involvement in a hit-and-run without access to a car. Suddenly, a loud knock echoes at her door. The person repeatedly knocks loudly on the door. When she finally opens it, she finds her neighbor, Kong Sivan, standing there. He leans closer to her to check if she's been drinking, but it turns out she hasn't, which strikes him as odd. So, he asks if she stayed up late drinking the previous night. In response, she questions his intrusion and calls him rude. This leads to an argument, and Kong angrily suggests she should apologize before saying anything else. Gun is baffled, struggling to grasp the situation until Kong presents her with security camera footage. He asks her to decide whether he should involve the insurance company or the police. This triggers a memory of her sister mentioning a hit and run, causing her to break into a nervous sweat. Unfortunately, Kong has concrete evidence of the damage, leaving Gun with a swarm of questions for her sister but no immediate answers. Kong advises her not to bother with excuses, indicating he isn't buying them. Gun contemplates making her sister take responsibility, but ultimately, she swallows her pride and offers a sincere apology to Kong. However, he insists that her apology lacks sincerity. In an effort to prove her genuine remorse, she bows deeply and apologizes once more. The guilt weighs on her as she thinks about adding her sister to her insurance out of guilt for not denying her request, and she wonders how her sister could leave her to deal with this mess. She then pledges to cover the damages and apologizes for previously labeling Kong as rude. She even offers to report the incident to the insurance company herself. Kong, after hearing her apology, walks away, still harboring some unease but distracted by his hunger, so he heads to the convenience store. A little while later, Gun approaches Kong and inquires about how he deduced her involvement in damaging his car. He responds by questioning her intelligence and mentioning the high-quality footage captured by dashboard cameras these days. She pleads with him to show her the footage to confirm something. He leads her into his house to do so, though she hesitates, feeling a bit uneasy, and considers leaving the front door open due to rumors. As they enter his home, she can't help but admire the interior, almost losing track of Kong. She apologizes once more for intruding, and Kong notices her curiosity, asking if she came to spy on his house or if she's more interested in his personal life than the footage itself. Feeling somewhat awkward, Gun apologizes again, admitting she hadn't realized Kong was a photographer. So, he decides to show her some of his work and asks for her honest opinion. She straightforwardly tells him it's terrible, 
which surprises Kong, making him wonder if she's some kind of talented impersonator because she seems so different from the person in the footage. Kong decides to ask her a personal question, and she agrees to answer. He asks her if he comes across as despicable to her since she always appears annoyed when she sees him. She insists that there must be some misunderstanding. Kong suspects she might be avoiding the truth but encourages her not to make faces when she sees him again. He even suggests she leave if that's all she came for because he needs to eat breakfast. However, she seems concerned about him eating the same store-bought food again. Just as she's about to leave, Kong insists they introduce themselves properly, and they exchange names and shake hands. Secretly, Gun admits to herself that she can't believe she initially suspected him of being a criminal. He then asks her to fix his car, reminding her that she's his neighbor and he won't let her off easily because of that. She asks him if he likes Jang Joram, a Korean soy-braised beef dish, and advises him not to eat until she returns, as she plans to bring him some. A few days later at the studio, it's a beautiful day. Gun's co-worker, Hyunho, seems to be in high spirits, sharing that he has a blind date after work. Meanwhile, Gun has online orders to complete but suddenly realizes it's already lunchtime. She asks Hyunho if he'd like to have lunch together, suggesting she could whip up some spicy noodles. She pleads with him to watch over the studio while she's away. After preparing the noodles, she invites Hyunho to join her, and he can't help but compliment the delicious aroma. While standing by the window, she notices her neighbor stepping out and wonders if he's off to the convenience store for food once more. She hurries outside to get his attention and inquires if that's his plan. He confirms, and she kindly offers him some of the spicy noodles since she has made more than enough for two servings. His silence makes her wonder if she has probed too much, but to her surprise, he asks if she has added cucumbers. She confirms, and he agrees to have some, following her inside the studio. She serves him a portion and observes him closely, wondering if she has brought him there against his will. After finishing the meal, he prepares to leave, declining the tea she offers and expressing his gratitude for the noodles. Gun can't help but notice that Kong is unusually quiet today, leaving her to wonder if something is bothering him. It's later in the night, and Kong is tossing and turning, struggling to fall asleep. He had a dream about his mother, one he didn't want to end. As an adult, such dreams are rare, and he can't help but blame himself for not saying anything to her in his dream. He believes that Gun might be the reason for this dream because her words and actions have an uncanny resemblance to his mother. Meanwhile, Gun is still at the studio, well past 10 p.m. However, she has plans to meet some friends for a drink nearby. Eager to quench her thirst in the hot weather, she rushes to complete her work. When she finally meets her friends, they engage in lively conversation, discussing one of them getting married, which momentarily stirs a hint of bitterness in Gun's heart. In another scene, Kong finds himself at a store, contemplating whether Gun likes ice cream because he's never seen her eat it before. He's determined to return the favor for the spicy noodles she generously gave him. He left her studio hastily that day, overwhelmed by emotions, and now regrets not properly thanking her. To express his gratitude, he decides to buy her some desserts, possibly ice cream. At the store, he approaches the salesperson and inquires if Gun has ever purchased ice cream there, but the salesperson is uncertain. Undeterred, Kong asks for a popular recommendation and, despite not being entirely sure if she'll like it, he purchases the ice cream. Upon returning home, he notices that the studio's lights are off and decides to check if Gun is home. Moments later, Gun arrives at her doorstep, and to her surprise, she spots someone sitting on her stairs. As she gets closer, she realizes it's Kong Sivan, who casually mentions that he's been patiently waiting for her. While they engage in conversation, Kong wonders if the sweet aroma he senses is coming from Gun or from the ice cream he just enjoyed. He presents her with the items he bought as a token of his appreciation for the noodles and his desire to properly thank her. In the early hours of the morning, Gun stirs from her sleep around 5 a.m. Feeling a bit thirsty, she decides to quench her thirst with a glass of water. When she opens her refrigerator, she discovers a delightful surprise, ice cream and cookies thoughtfully given to her by Kong Sivan. It catches her off guard because she had no inkling that he would do something so considerate. She even confesses that he looked exceptionally handsome today, perhaps because of his different style of clothing. Meanwhile, over at Kong Sivan's residence, he finds himself with unexpected guests who are busy admiring his magnificent home. Their uninvited presence begins to annoy him, and he starts to question their manners. One of his friends attempts to set him up with one of the girls, but Kong Sivan politely declines, expressing his disinterest. Despite their efforts to engage him in conversation, he appears uninterested. In an attempt to impress the guests, his friend mentions that Kong Sivan is actually more famous abroad than in Korea. Thanks to his frequent appearances in international publications like National Geographic, the ladies express their eagerness to tour Kong Sivan's home studio, 
but he firmly insists that his friend take them on the tour instead. Growing increasingly frustrated and exhausted by their presence, he can't wait for their one-hour visit to be over. Then, a sudden loud noise from upstairs disrupts the evening. Annoyed and curious, Kong rushes upstairs to investigate. Upon reaching the source of the commotion, he discovers the group in his dimly lit room, and his friend hastily explains that it was all a misunderstanding, he was simply trying to showcase the studio. Kong Sivan gently retrieves a photograph from the floor and promptly instructs the uninvited guests to leave his house. He holds a deep attachment to all the old cameras in that room, as they once belonged to his late father. These cameras are the last remnants of their family's belongings after their house tragically succumbed to fire. To him, these cameras may appear old and seemingly worthless to others, but they hold immense sentimental value and are incredibly precious. Kong is contemplating whether to continue working on the revisions, but he's struggling to focus because his mind keeps drifting to past memories, and he feels compelled to address them. In an attempt to clear his head, he considers going for a drive down to Namhi. Meanwhile, over at the studio, Gun is in the midst of teaching her class to her students. At one point, she steps outside and notices Kong Sivan. She inquires if he's planning to go somewhere, and he admits he's thinking about heading to Namhi, attributing his decision to the draining heat. Gun senses that he's deeply troubled, and though she's concerned, she wishes him a pleasant trip. He thanks her and starts to walk away. However, Gun, still worried about him, calls him back and hands him a sweet rice cake with red bean paste. She describes it as the perfect snack for a stressful day and assures him he doesn't need to worry about repaying her like last time. She returns to the studio but keeps an eye on him as he drives away, pondering her own concern for him and reminding herself to refocus on her work and maintain her composure. Kong has now reached a resting spot, feeling fatigued from the long drive. He considers taking a break and retrieves the rice cake Gun gave him. As he tastes it, he admits that she has quite a talent for making it. Despite constantly thinking about Gun lately, he still finds dealing with women to be quite tiresome. The next day, Kong is feeling somewhat fortunate. He managed to head out early and gather all the ingredients he needs for breakfast. He asks his friend to whip up the meal because he's got a hankering for something homemade. Kong Sivan is delighted to be here, finding solace in this familiar place. After a hearty meal, his friend offers him coffee, which sparks memories of their past. They continue chatting, and his friend playfully suggests that Kong should think about settling down here because, as a 33-year-old bachelor, he's starting to stand out. Kong, however, dismisses the idea, believing that women will just get on his nerves. His friend chuckles and tells him, you'll regret saying this someday. He shares how he used to view dating as stressful, but his perspective changed when he met his soulmate. He explains that in a serious relationship, it's normal for your partner to occasionally annoy you. Kong, with a bitter tone, admits he's never had a serious relationship. All the women he's been with either wanted his inheritance or hoped he could boost their modeling careers. After their conversation, Kong Sivan decides to take a nap and asks his friend to wake him up later for some fishing. He starts to mull over the idea that living here might not be such a bad notion after all. Back in Yungi Village, Gun asks her co-worker Hyunho to man the counter at her studio. While he's on duty, he notices a woman who's been hanging around for a while. He can't help but wonder who she is and what she wants, especially with no one currently home across the street. The woman, sensing his watchful eyes, approaches him and inquires if he knows the man who lives nearby and where he might be. With a bit of hesitation, he replies that he doesn't know. The woman doesn't take kindly to his response and starts verbally berating him. Gun, noticing the commotion, strides over to find out what's happening. She sternly tells the woman that she owes Hyunho an apology for her rude behavior, emphasizing that confronting someone without reason is impolite. However, the woman assumes Gun's frustration stems from her not making a purchase, so she hands over her card, demanding that Gun charge her for any items in the store. The studio owner stands her ground, firmly stating that she won't sell anything to someone who displays such rudeness. She advises her co-worker that he doesn't have to serve ill-mannered customers. After the incident with the woman, Hyun Ho praises his boss as the best. Meanwhile, in Namhi, Kong Sivan just wrapped up a phone call with Cha yon -hee. He's impressed by her determination to stand up for others. A contented smile spreads across his face, catching the attention of his friend, who asks about the caller. Kong shares that it was his neighbor from across the street, describing her as quite an intriguing woman. He can't hide his eagerness to get to know her better. Currently, Kong Sivan is overwhelmed by a strong yearning for his home and intends to return there. However, his friend is putting in the effort to convince him to stay a bit longer, but Kong remains determined to leave on the same day. His emotions are a bit muddled as he's hurriedly departing from this serene place, leaving behind a sense of peace. The next day, back at the studio, Gun notices that her neighbor has already returned. She wonders how everything went for him. 
The following morning, Kong wakes up and immediately realizes it's going to be another scorching day. He heads for some water, commenting on the unbearable heat. He contemplates tending to the lawn and refilling the pool since he went through the trouble of preparing it for the summer. But he soon realizes he's low on milk, so he opts for the side dishes his friend packed for him on his way back. After scouring the entire house, Kong realizes there's nothing substantial to eat at home. His only option is to make another trip to the convenience store. He notices that Gun isn't at her studio but decides not to dwell on it, primarily seeking refuge from the relentless heat. Unexpectedly, he runs into her at the convenience store and inquires about her well-being during his absence. She assures him she was fine and swiftly departs the store after a brief exchange with her neighbor. She even tells the salesperson that she's getting Kong a drink, which leaves him surprised. Kong starts to wonder if they've become close enough for her to buy him a drink. The inquisitive salesperson then probes Kong about whether Gun is as friendly to him as she is to others, but Kong evades a direct answer. The persistent salesperson insists that since he's answered his questions, Kong should reciprocate. This prompts Kong to ponder the salesperson's observation about Gun being exceedingly friendly with people but fleeing when he greeted her. He also recalls her friendliness towards stray dogs. Pausing to reflect, Kong begins to wonder if she might be afraid of him as well. Kong Sivan notices Gun in the store with a guy in the corner of her shop. He gazes at them for an extended moment and then enters the store, closing the door behind him rather forcefully. Something about their positioning had struck him as odd. Meanwhile, Gun is cautioning her coworker to handle the pliers carefully and kindly offers to tidy up the shop while he takes a break. She's relieved that Hai and Ho isn't seriously injured but is concerned about the redness in his eyes. So, she provides him with some local medicine for his eyes. Gun reminisces about her encounter with Kong at the store and how he greeted her. She contemplates how their interactions might give people the impression that there's something more between them. Now, she can't seem to get him out of her thoughts. Later that night, Kong lounges by his pool, his thoughts circling around the fact that Gun closed her shop early. He can't help but wonder why he even cares about her closing time now. Still, the image of what he saw earlier, when he thought she was kissing a guy in broad daylight, haunts him. He even mentions that he'll have to explain this to his nephew, and the thought adds to his discomfort. He's perplexed by his own emotions, struggling to understand why he feels bad about the situation. He contemplates whether Gun and the guy are dating, and it bothers him even more. Kong confesses that Gun annoyed him from the beginning, but now he dislikes her even more. He tells himself that he didn't avoid women his whole life just to end up in this situation, reassuring himself that there are plenty of other women out there. He questions the source of his feelings for Gun and why he's drawn to such a bold woman. Resolute in his decision, he tells himself he needs to stop thinking about her. The next morning, Kong wakes up, still plagued by thoughts of Gun, which irritate him to no end. He finds her presence and his thoughts distracting. In an attempt to divert his attention, he compliments her dress, but it proves almost futile. Kong can't help but notice that Gun observes his odd behavior today. Despite his inner turmoil, he finds himself praising her for always wearing a smile, laughing easily, and being so helpful to people. There's still more in this captivating love story between two neighbors, the question remains, will their paths continue to intersect, or will their feelings pull them apart? Want us to continue this story? Please leave a comment below. And if you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Until next time, ciao.